put it here somewhere. What the? Hey guys, Manisha here, and yes, it is Game Jam time! You may have heard of the small game jam going around on Twitter called the Chain Letter Jam. Once you get tagged in this game jam, your mission is to create a game based off of theirs, add your own little twist to it, and then nominate three other people to do the same thing. And we would try to keep this going for as long as possible. Game dev and YouTuber Mizizizis kicked off this challenge by creating a short one minute word game with the protagonist named Wordman and an evil villain named Dr. Letters. The goal of his game would be to create words from the letters that spawn. Each word creates an attack towards Dr. Letters to bring him down. Alright, before I even start, let's take some notes on the games I was nominated by. Zyger originally tagged me in her game Comic Sans. It's a fun little game where you dodge walls to collect letters. She then puts in her own twist by switching from a 2D perspective to 3D. Yannick also tagged me and took a similar approach in his by switching from 3D to AR, which is super cool. So it looks like the reoccurring theme of this game jam so far is to build words, so I want to keep that and put my own twist on it. Making a short game might seem simple, but you also have very little time to hook the player's interest. To me, this is usually by keeping things fresh and juicy, putting care into the visuals and making controls easy to grasp. If the user were to play this game for exactly one minute, how could I leave them with something somewhat memorable? After some quick brainstorming, I decided to do the perspective that good and bad words can bring. It would be a grid-based arcade style game with similar mechanics to Snake. I really wanted to highlight the part where you switch from good to bad and bad to good, just to give the game a little bit more of a dramatic effect. This was going to be the first game I made where I did all the artwork by myself, and that was very intimidating for me. But I was super excited. Pixel art is something I've been practicing here and there, and just recently I've been doing a lot of pixel art on YouTuber Andrew's stream, and it's really fun to see how everyone's just improving and building confidence. So I felt like I was kind of prepared, and the one week span I was going to do this game jam for was ample time. The first step was to create a grid for the letters to be on. I sort of just freestyled this to see how big the grid should be, and just to get a feel of what the game could be like. I then looked for a color palette that I could use just to get inspired for the artwork, and I found this really nice Midnight Ablaze palette, and I got started with the movement for my pawn. I kind of struggled here for a bit because I was using transform to move the pawn from grid space to grid space. I just did a simple subtraction or addition to move the space, but this didn't seem so accurate because it was always off by a little bit, which ended up offsetting my entire higher grid space. So instead I had to take a little bit of the hard way and hard code every value on the x and y axes. And then I would use a combination of this to move the space. For choosing words I just did a randomized list of good words and bad words. And I would also make sure to respawn cards so we don't lose any letters. So the game's not really chaotic, you just have to be careful of every movement you make. Music and sound was probably one of my favorite parts for this game. In this case, I found a really cool 8-bit track, so when the evil part of the game starts, I would distort the music and layer some disturbing sounds on top of it. I wanted to go for a vibe that would represent how a person felt if they heard these hurtful words. So I found some of these demon emerging sounds, some scream sounds, and a really annoying telephone ring that won't stop. To distort the music track itself, I used an audio low-pass filter in Unity, and just played around with it until I was happy with the distortion levels. It was really important to me to get the visual style right for this game, especially working solo. I started with a card design for the letters, and for some reason I wanted to have a girl bobbing her head to the music, so I worked on her design for a while. I plopped it all into Unity and tweaked some of the colors, but nothing seemed right. I decided to leave it for now and just tweak the post-processing, added a bit of chromatic aberration, and lens distortion. I decided to just do manual borders instead of the vignette though. Finally, things were coming together. And instead of working on the gameplay a bit more, I decided to do some particle effects. 
I quickly created a new rendition of Dr. Letters, and since I wasn't quite satisfied with the visual style yet, I decided to do another iteration. With just a couple tweaks in the colors, it looked a lot more cohesive, so it was definitely worth the extra time. I finished off the rest of the art with a couple enemies, then I got to animating. This was just a simple state machine to trigger all the enemies and the dark mode. Nothing too fancy for the animations, but this was the first time that I was going to do frame by frame animation. So I just gave her a cute little bobbing and blinking animation. Whoa, why does this look like me when I wake up in the morning? <laughs> Anyways, I just gave her a phased animation during the evil levels. Just to clean up, I realized that there were way too many letters and it was very hard for your eyes to focus. So I got rid of a couple of the cards and decided to alternate two different colors to make it a little bit more readable. It's very subtle, but I think it made a difference. Overall, I think it's just a very chill game. There's no sense of urgency and the good and bad mode is exactly the same difficulty. For a one minute game, I think that was okay. Realistically, the difficulty should vary for a longer game. This game wasn't meant to be an arcade game, but I think the minimal controls would be perfect. So get this keyboard out of here and let's make a joystick controller. I was expecting that I might have to build something on a Raspberry Pi, but it was actually surprisingly easy to just have a controller connect to your computer. So I found one of these packs on Amazon and it came with the complete set. This just consisted of the buttons, the joystick, a USB cable, wires for the connections, and some extra wires because these buttons were LED. Ooh, fancy. And of course a USB encoder which would help us convert all the signals from the joystick and the buttons into our PC. Perfect, now we just need a board to install our components into. I made markings for all the buttons and the joystick part, and I got my dad to drill those parts. Wait a second, is it supposed to smoke up like that? Anyways, let's put it together. It was surprisingly easy to follow the instructions. All the buttons went into their designated space. I only ended up installing four of the main buttons because I didn't think I needed all eight for this game. I think this is just gonna be a temporary build for now. Maybe I'll do an actual Raspberry Pi arcade build in the future. But yeah, super simple to install. Every button just had its own two connection wires as well as their two LED wires. Everything then goes into the USB encoder and then the USB cable goes from the USB encoder into your PC. Alright, let's give it our first spin. Yeah! Works like a charm. The one thing that I did mess up here was not orienting the joystick in the right way, so my computer recognized it in the wrong directions. But that's easily fixable by just reinstalling the joystick in the right position. So yeah, that was definitely cool to build. It basically works as a regular USB controller, so you can definitely play other games on it. Now that we have our joystick controller, I think we need to spice up the game so that we make use of our buttons a little bit more. Since I wanted to add some challenge, I decided to do some damage bullets coming from either side of the grid. I decided to pull some inspiration from Undertale's battle systems and just incorporate it into my game. I also added a little timer to increase the urgency and to make use of our joystick button, I decided to give our little player a dash. I definitely wanted to use some of the other buttons, but I couldn't really think of any mechanics for now. So these are some of the changes I added to give the game a little bit more challenge. This was a really cool game jam to be a part of, and it would be amazing to see everyone get a chance at it. That's all I have for now. See you guys next time.